Fantasy Arcade dropped yesterday and we have the Fort Defense, a new little mini game for you to play on Idle Heroes. There's a lot of information scattered across the internet with different guys, different tips, different tricks, and it can seem very overwhelming. So today I'm going to give you 10 pieces of advice that will pretty much tell you everything you need to know. Watch this video and you will never fail at this game mode again unless it's a skill issue. One of the reasons you might want to go ahead and play these mini games is to go ahead and get yourself fantasy stars to get yourself a ton of rewards. If this isn't attractive to you, let me remind you that there is the opportunity to get a ton of things, including master's toolboxes and artifacts. This is pretty good if you're a free to play player because you have to spend zero money to engage with this. As well, another reason to get good scrub is because over here, if you look, the further you get in the trial mode, the more of these chests you can get, which contain stellar shards. And if you're good enough and can get to wave 95, you will get yourself a ton of these chests in total just for logging in because you will automatically jump to wave 96 to start off your fight, which means you could totally lose, still get all the rewards, and it means every single time you attempt, you're going to walk away with 100,000 stellar shards a day, provided you go ahead and get 25,000 from all the attempts you can do. You get 10 attempts for free, plus an additional 10 with gems. It costs five to go ahead and battle, so that's four tries, four times 25,000 stellar shards is 100,000 a day. That is three million stellar shards a month. That is huge for your accounts. So now you know why you need to go ahead and care about this game mode, let me tell you my top tips for making progress. The first thing you need to know is what units are good. We have frontliners and backliners, and mages are the backliners to go for. You will see that there are rangers as well. These aren't worth it. Mages are good for two reasons. They have high damage because they do big splash damage. Yes, they attack slower than rangers, but their attack hits harder and has damage over time. On top of that, when you max out your mages, you will unlock Fairy Queen Vessa, who when she is summoned is able to buff your troops. Fairy Queen Vessa is a fantastic Transcendence legendary hero to deploy to this fight, and is probably the only one worth going for, with potential exceptions. Sword Flash is pretty good for damage, but she's not potentially necessary, and is only worth it once you've upgraded rangers to unlock her, and it's never worth upgrading rangers until until you fully maxed out mage and warrior. So my advice, use mages as your damage and use warriors as buffers. Piece of advice number two is warriors are there to literally be a wall to slow down opponents. Take a look at this fight here on screen and you can see the enemies will not progress past our warriors whilst they're deployed. This gives our mages a fantastic opportunity to attack. And also when the dominator boss shows up, he can wipe out waves in one of his attacks. That's a problem if he hits your mages because all your mages die. So you want to deploy warriors progressively so that when he does that active skill, he kills the warriors that are already there, but another one shows up on time to stop him advancing. This gives your mages the maximum opportunity to deal damage to him without him getting close enough to your tower to cause damage to it, or close enough to your mages to kill them. Warriors are here as buffers. Therefore, you don't want Asmodel the Dauntless. He costs 500 gold, whereas a normal warrior when it's upgraded costs 70, so is pretty much almost 10 times the cost. And on top of that, a warrior is there just to pad out fights and prevent enemies from advancing. There's not really a reason to invest in an Asmodel. Even mine is four star and I find him wasted. The only reason he might be good is because he has a ton of HP and is hard to take down, but you could just summon another warrior and you'll be absolutely fine. So I would rather just spam warriors than waste time investing my gold in Asmodel the Dauntless. Piece of advice number three, do the Frontier Four chapters first until you've beaten all 10 stages. This is so that you can go ahead and upgrade your Fort Tech. Fort Tech improves the power of your units, which means you are then able to compete in the trial. Once you've done all 10 stages, then you just want to use your attempts on trial mode to try and make it as far as you possibly can. The further you get in trial, the better rewards you achieve. So step one, go and do all 10 chapters. Step two, focus on trial. One quick thing about tech as well is some of these upper upgrades are great. They're going to give you unit caps, which means you can deploy more units. However, some of them aren't worth going for, such as anything that improves your fort's durability. Ideally, your fort never gets attacked, and if it will be attacked, it'll be hit by a boss who will one-shot it, so it doesn't matter how good your durability is. This is a wasted upgrade. Focus on upgrading your units on this middle line first. 
Tip four is that units can be progressively upgraded. Once they get higher and higher, they become more powerful. One issue though is units stay the power they were when they were deployed. That means it's good to send in waves to die so that you can then respawn new versions of those mages who are going to be stronger versions. This means it's okay to let your weaker mages die to allow stronger mages to then be deployed. So little tip, suiciding units to build in new ones that are better is a good strategy. Tip number five. Five is the fast start. When you go ahead and enter the game mode, it will jump you to a wave proportional to how far you got last time. This is good because when we were saying units won't upgrade when they're already deployed, this actually won't bother you. The trick to do here is go into the left and upgrade your four one time by using the gold you are given. Then go onto the right hand side and upgrade mages all the way to level 17 and put the rest of your stuff into warrior. This means now when you deploy your mages, they will be max upgraded so you don't need to sacrifice them to go for better ones because they're already as powerful as possible. Tip number six is using Fairy Queen Vessa properly. Read her ability, Holy Incarnation. It increases all allies attack each time she is recruited. Therefore, you want to recruit her after you've summoned your mages at the beginning. So let's say you have eight slots for a backline split across two lanes. You'll do three mages at the top, three mages at the bottom, then deploy your vessels and that will buff your mages power. Always do vessels last. In addition, in trial mode, you have three different lanes to play with. Whenever a Vessa dies in one of those lanes, summon another one and she'll buff all your units that you have out at the moment. Therefore, spamming Vessas is fantastic for improving your damage, and damage is essential for clearing waves. Another trick that's important is managing your gold wisely, because gold is essential to upgrading the tower. Now, a lot of people will say don't upgrade the tower too much. This is true as well. But upgrading the tower is great when you're really close and you want to eke out a little bit of a bonus for your team by giving you more levels to upgrade your troops or by getting you an increased number of units that you can deploy. However, in the standard modes, 16 is the most units you can have because that's the number of deployment slots you have. In the trial mode, the the highest you can get up to is 28 or 30 if you have the tech that gives you two extra slots. Therefore, there's no point upgrading the tower to unlock new units when you've already hit the unit deployment max. Bear that in mind. Therefore, after that point, gold is best used to go ahead and focus on units. So how do you focus on units? Well, tip number eight is to keep an eye on your lane state. You will notice that lanes will shift and change. Enemies will come from certain directions. In normal mode, that's fine because you can just go ahead and make sure that your warriors are always there. If a warrior is about to die, just deploy another one as soon as he does, and that way you can keep the enemies pushed back and allow your mages to fight. However, when it comes to trial mode, you need to be aware what's coming and from where. In early trial modes, it's good to have your side lanes deployed with units so that they can push enemies back and keep the enemies whittled down. However, in later trial, enemies become a little too strong for that to be viable. Therefore, in the middle where your castle is, that's where you want to deploy a bunch of mages and warriors, but then on the sides, you want to deploy warriors too, as they can buffer against the enemy waves, giving your mages more time to decimate the opponents, because there will be a lot of enemies to deal with. And when those warriors do die that are acting as a buffer, get ready to spam out more. As long as your warriors are always out on your side lanes, the enemies will only come at a very slow rate therefore giving you time to act. It's essential that you keep an eye on your upper and lower lane and spam warriors accordingly. Tip nine is about wave skipping. There's two ways to save yourself against enemy waves. Either you can see there's a button that says skip to next wave. If you click that button, it will immediately end the timer and bring the next wave out. However, if you click that at the final possible moment, there's a chance that you skip out the entire next wave entirely. This is great against boss waves where the dominator would spawn. It's not a bad trick to get really, really far in trial because skipping out the boss entirely will save your ass. It's kind of cheating and will probably get patched, but it works. Another trick for dealing with the boss is when he gets deployed, just spam warriors at him and stall and stall and stall. And when the wave ends after one minute and you're onto the new wave, that will count as completing that wave. So even if you lose, you can respawn back in and it will actually fast track you to the point you got to and you don't have to fight that boss again. That's really helpful. Skipping waves is the key to getting as far as possible. However, when you do get zoomed back and placed in, bear in mind, enemies will spawn very quickly. So you got to get ready to spam out those units before you get overwhelmed. Look what happened to me here. Look at that! You reached wave 30 previously and you could choose to continue the battle from wave 31. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah! Go! Oh, this is hard. They just didn't give us a chance. It wasn't pleasant. And finally, tip number 10 is to use free resets. You can pause the game in the top corner and actually press the button that will allow you to start all over again. That doesn't use an attempt. So if it looks like things are gonna get bad, don't be afraid just to restart from where you were up to and just try again. That's not gonna cost any additional attempts and could actually be a really nice trick to go ahead and make sure that you can get the maximum rewards possible without wasting your attacks. Because do bear in mind, you only get 20 coins to play these arcade games every Every single day. So there's no point wasting those coins when you could just restart the fight all over again. Use these tricks and you will do very, very well, not only in the base game, but also in the trial mode as well. Make sure you use those mages for maximum damage, sacrifice them off if you need them to get powerful versions of themselves out, spam those vessels for more damage, and use those warriors to buffer away and stop that boss getting to you in time. With all those tricks put together and a lot of skill on your part, you will do very well. Now a final bonus piece of advice, it's much easier to play this on computer than it is on mobile. So if you've never considered downloading Idle Heroes for a PC before, go into the description and you can find an affiliate link to an emulator called LD Player. It's a really fast and responsive emulator that is quite good on most PCs. I think even lower spec PCs should be able to run it just fine. So go ahead, give that a try, and hopefully if you're an Android user, you'll be able to log in onto your Idle Heroes account and go ahead and play on PC, meaning you can actually use a mouse which is super helpful for dealing with these opponents i wouldn't use a trackpad though like that that sounds like hell I, i'd rather just use a touchscreen so uh yeah laptop users buy a mouse for your own sake hopefully you found that useful i'll see you next time any more questions about this game mode drop them in the comments see you later folks don't forget to subscribe and happy idling